Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Hello and welcome to another great episode of the Great Debaters Contest. I am your host, Austin Nyambok. And I am Mariam Bishar, and we have a very entertaining debate for you today. The 2012 Constitution of Kenya allows for dual citizenship, so we're debating on whether dual citizenship should be encouraged. Of course, Mbai Tini and Matu Schools will be handling this very interesting motion. Let's leave it to the debaters now. Proposal number one. You have three minutes. I salute you all, ladies and gentlemen. I am Diana Wanza from Matu Memorial. I would like to talk about dual citizenship, why dual citizenship should be encouraged. Um, number one, dual citizenship is the right to belong to two countries, having citizenship from two countries. That is dual nationalism. So you're going to find that when you're a dual citizen, you will have the ease to travel, unlike when you're a, uh, you're a citizen of one country, it will be somehow difficult, you know? So, if you're a dual citizen, you're going to enjoy the protection of both governments, of the either governments. If you have a problem when traveling, you can report your problem to one of the embassies, any of the embassies, you know? So you, 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 you have the protection from both governments, you have the ease to travel to both of the countries where you belong, and you have a sense of belonging. You belong to both countries. You feel loved, you know, from the both governments. Then, you know, um, the having, du having dual citizenship will, will give you the ease to travel in that you will find that you, had, you recently heard about the people who drowned in the Mediterranean Sea when they were escaping from their country. If, if they used dual citizenship, it would have been easier for them to travel. It would have been a safer means for them to travel to the other country instead of escaping, of which they even drowned because they did not have any other safer means to travel. So if they had dual citizenship, it would have been much easier for them to travel to their country. Natural, uh, sorry, cultural integration. You'll find that if you're a citizen of two countries, you're going to have, you're going to get exposed to different things. You're going to get exposed to different culture and you're going to learn new things, you're going to interact, and you're going to get adapted to the culture of the, of the other country. You're just going to, to interact. You're going to get an exposure. It will, it will feel good to know different things, to experience, to experience a different environment, you know, to learn about different foods. Instead, like, you know, if you're, if you're a citizen of one country, you're going to get used to your country so much. So if you have dual citizenship, you're going to get exposed to a different environment, you're going to get ad adapted to the other en environment, and you're going to, to, to learn about different things. And another thing is national integration. You're going to find that if you're a dual citizen, if you must be a dual citizen, the two countries that the two countries have to agree before you become a dual citizen. So it promotes, it, it, it promotes national integration. If they agree you're going to be a citizen of both countries, the both countries will be in peace. That's why we're, we're, we're not going to have cases like xenophobia. Thank you. The opening statements by the opposition. You have three minutes. Hello, guys. I'm Jonathan Wambua from the Mpakini School. First and foremost, I would like to oppose my opponents who have said that dual citizenship encourages easy traveling. Let me start by asking them a question. Dual citizenship only supports having belonging to two countries only. What about the other countries that you want to belong to? That is a question that you should answer yourselves. Dual citizenship is only for the rich. Just imagine a person in Trukana who wants to stay or to reside in the United States of America. He or she does not have the capital 
does not have the money, does not have the funds to fund the traveling to the United States of America. So, I will strictly say that dual citizenship is for the rich. My counterparts have also said that it brings a sense of belonging. Let me ask you a question, my dear audience. A sense of belonging, and yet you are betraying your own country. What makes you want to move to that other country? What makes you admire the things in other countries, yet you have your own nation, whereby you can build it, you can develop it, you can bring more investors in the country and become a developed country. What is cultural integration? I will put it this way. Cultural integration is whereby you interact with other customs and tradition of the other countries. Last year, we had our women, our ladies, being stripped. Why? Because they are borrowed the customs and tradition of the developed countries. And if our ladies go to those countries, they will forget their customs and traditions. And more so, they will forget their relatives. That is why we have people who come from those countries they call Maju. When they come to our countries, they forget their relatives. They even forget their own language. They pretend they don't know their national language. That is the Swahili. So my dear audience, I'm standing, and I will continue standing to oppose this motion. Dual citizenship should not be encouraged. Thank you. Time now for rebuttals. Proposers, you have three minutes. On to my first point. You are provided with two passports. As a dual citizen, you are allowed to carry both passports for the countries that you are your citizen to. For example, if you are a citizen both in USA and New Zealand, you can travel more easily if easily between the two countries. Having a citizen passport eliminates the need for long stay visas and questioning about the purpose of your trip. It also guarantees right of entry to both countries, which can be especially important if you, can, if you have families to visit, if you are a student, if, and if you have business in either countries. On to my second point, a dual citizen can receive benefits and privileges offered by both countries. For example, they, are, they have access to two social services system. You can, you can have political rights such as voting in either countries. They are also allowed to work in either country without needing a work permit or a visa. And another thing is that you are allowed in, an, in either countries at the citizen tuition rate if you want to study there. And on to my third point, your access to both government embassies. For example, when you are asked for identification during international travels, you can, you can, you can supply problems among officials. And one can travel both as a native citizen thus avoiding the lengthy airport queues and questioning about your, purpo your purposes. My question is, ask yourself, why do many countries accept dual citizen if it does not pe pe benefit that, that specific country? Thank you. Opposition, time for your rebuttal. You also have three minutes. I'm Brian Mutuku from the Bikini School. To begin with, there are restrictions of job opportunities that one cannot enjoy if you are dual citizenship. Being a member of the army, the Kenya Defense Forces, for example, you cannot be a, a, a citizen in another country because you are limited to the job that you are doing in your country. Being an army means you know most of the secret of the government, and that means you will not be accepted easily in another government for your rules that you play here in Kenya. In addition to that, Dual citizenship is not an easy process, as many of you may think. For one, for instance, let, uh, let's take an example of here in Kenya. For one to be registered as a citizen here in Kenya, you must stay indoors for more than seven years, lawfully being a resident of Kenya. That means 
you will have time wasted moving to a country staying more than the years that they require in a certain country of which I may not be sure of. That means you may have a heavy task before you. And immediately you get your, your, your registration as a citizen of that country, that does not mean you leave the country. It means you stay in, boarded by the laws of that country. Again, being a dual citizen, you're boarded by laws of different countries. For example, you, you, you're in Kenya, the same time you're also a citizen in the US. That means US laws bond you, and Kenyan laws also bond you. There are also services you can't enjoy in a, in a, in a government of, of such. Thirdly, to my proposal number two, we talked about those people who go in higher education, uh, those who are having dual citizenship. So to me, I don't understand what she meant, because I understand people and most of the students we have here go abroad, and they are not dual citizens. You may also move as a, as a student, go to the Oxford University, study, come back. That does not mean you become a citizen. Thank you. Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. The proposers were asked uh, if dual citizenship poses the challenge of split interest, which economies will dual citizens develop? You know, they have to choose between two. And uh, the opposition have been asked to clarify on the issue of marriage and how it affects the citizenship of children. So we leave them now to tackle the question. The third proposer, three minutes. Greetings to you all. I am Atra Tambeke from Atu Memorial. I'd first like to answer the question asked about the people about what kind of an economy one is supposed one is meant to develop and become a dual citizenship when you become when you've decided that you're going to be a dual citizen then it comes with responsibilities and conditions so if you choose to be the a citizen of both of both countries then why you you obviously know the reasons why you chose the two countries. You know which country you suit you best. At that chance, you stand a chance to, at that point you stand a chance to have two options. So the two countries you've chosen, then if you basically went to a country seeking for, um, for citizen in, in the name of economy or business wise, then you, you don't want to make the choice. And you have two choices to make the better. I'd like to question an opposer who talked about being rich and acquiring citizen on the grounds of being rich. I totally oppose that point because a child born, born from another country, refugees do give birth in foreign countries. That child is a citizen of that country. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't make you rich for you to be, to be a citizen. Some types of citizenship come automatically, such as birth. So when you tell us that you being rich, you're going to be a citizen, and the citizenship is based on being rich, then you're misleading us. And I'd back up on the point on sense of belonging, because you, if you're loved, I mean, everybody, we as human beings like being loved. So if, you had, if you've attracted attention and love from two countries, why are you not being happy? It's good, it feels good, it feels secure. So as for me, I feel it's good being, it's good being a citizen of two countries. Uh, a point is on property ownership. A country like USA has strict rules on property ownership. So like land, you cannot acquire land in the US without you being a citizen of that country. 
So if you become a dual citizenship, you stand in a better position for you to, be, to own property in that country. Some property like land appreciates with time. So when you, are, when you own land in the US and you're a Kenyan, you have better chances and you'll economically grow. You'll econ economically grow. So I'd like the opposers to cross to the other side and propose to the motion that says dual citizenship should be encouraged. After all, if dual citizen ever existed, it has to be good. Position respond, you also have three minutes. Uh, hi guys, I'm Gibson Dongo uh, from the Makini School. I'd like first of all to start by answering the question that was posted. If a, a child is birth, maybe for example in Kenya, and the parents belong uh, to the USA, that, parent, uh, that, child, uh, sorry, that child becomes a Kenyan citizen by birth. And uh, that child can also be registered in USA through registration. Thank you. Uh, and also I'd like to talk on patriotism. When you have dual citizenship, that means that you belong to two countries uh, by citizenship. Uh, that means you will not have that patriotism, that love of your country. If your country is going through toughness, you may go out and try to hide in other countries. Instead of sticking there and fighting for your country and uh, being there for it. For example, uh, I'd like to give an example on uh, those guys on sports. For example, Oliech. I'm sorry to use uh, his name. Uh, Oliech is a very good footballer and belongs to Kenya. But uh, when he was playing in Qatar, he used to, like, you know, uh, post many things that he was supposed to be done, maybe pay for visas to come and play for a local team. If that guy had dual citizenship, do you think he will be coming to play for Kenyan uh, team? No. He will just be playing in Qatar and staying there. I also want to talk on uh, taxation. Uh, that, uh, through taxation, that's how government earns its revenue. And through taxation, when government and its revenue, our economy is boosted. If you're going to allow people to have dual citizenship, that means that they're going to separate their businesses. You see, they're going to create empires outside our country and inside our country. That means we are not going to have our economic growth. If we allow them to do that, we're going to limit our chances of ever growing as a country. I want to also talk about enhancing our security. If a person has dual citizenship, that means he, ha he is entitled to Kenyan citizenship and maybe, for example, US citizenship. If anything is, happens in Kenya, if uh, the security guys are interrogating about something, this guy can not be suspected because he has both citizenships. He can claim to be a Kenyan and he can claim to be a USA, so he can have easy movement from Kenya to, uh, to outside countries. Thank you. I also want to talk about exploiting our natural resources. Those people are requesting to have a Kenyan citizenship from outside. They want to invest in Kenyan resources. Why don't we allow us Kenyan people to invest on our resources instead of allowing people to come from outside our country, get dual citizenship, and start exploiting our resources just before our eyes? Even if they say people move to green pastures, I believe also that that dry pasture uh, outside there can be watered and become green. So I believe that us as Kenyans, we can pull our uh, resources together and be mighty. Thank you. We'll now hear closing submissions, beginning with the proposition. You have one minute. Thank you once again. I feel that the opposition team has agreed us on the point on is, is to travel. I think when you invest in other countries, that's, that's part of like such as imports, they give us taxes and tax is part of the government's income. So when you discourage us from investing abroad, that's kind, that shows some ignorance at some point. So I think some of us are going to die because of liking cheap things. Everything comes with an expense and cheap is expensive. Opposition, you have one minute. I like the way our opponents are speaking because one of them has just said I think the opposition should cross to the opposers so which means you, she's not sure of what she is saying I would like to dearly ask you my my dear audience how many would like to betray their country how many would like to sell their patriotism to other countries Kenyans, we need to open our eyes 
unless we, co we correct the close errors, we can never move to the wiser. And the motto of Machakos Boy states, wisdom ahead. Where are we going to get the wisdom? If ourselves, we cannot think about being patriotic to our country. Thank you. Needless to say, I think it would have been safe for the two teams to just use simple, direct examples that we can understand uh, without really having to dig deep to, to a lot of places that you went to in terms of the merits and the demerits. Lilian, your role is to cross-examine the team. And this also comes across to Joel as well. Of course, you tried a bit, but Lilian, you, we need to know that you listen to the other team. And so you come and try and tell us what are the weak places that, uh, that, 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 they, that they gave. A bit of monotony in delivery, but I believe you can do better when, if, if you really do some practice. To the two teams, I would, I'd want to say this. This was not the expected result that we got. And I think it's, we are unanimous as, as judges. There is more that can be done because we've had debates here and we have had uh, others that have come across better. So kindly work on how you can really improve as debaters. Thank you. By Kini, you're making some very dangerous statements. And, and my comment is, please don't, don't use pedestrian arguments in such a motion. This is also an academic exercise, and the audience that is watching wants to learn from, you know, from your presentation. So other than the sense of humor that you provided, there's still a lot of room for growth for your team. And the first speaker, Diana, uh, you raised significant issues, but your last issue is what I liked, national integration and dual citizenship. I think that was a fairer point. What I'm trying to say is, the stronger argument should come first, the weaker argument should come last. This was not a very good debate, not very good. And I'll advise the two teams to watch the Great Debaters show on KBC Channel One between 6.20 and 6.50 to improve on your debating skills. Matu School has 59.3%, give them a hand. <laughs> Baitini has 59.1%. That makes Matu School the winner of this debate. So from all of us here at the Great Debaters Contest, KBC Channel 1 and Safari Mempesa, we'll catch you next time. I'm Austin Nyambok. And I'm Mariam Bishar. Thank you for watching. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa.